Line 70. It has to be line 70. Please work. Just work. Okay. It is not there. The error is not there. So, how do we fix this error? <sighs> Errors. Errors can be really frustrating. Especially those unsolvable ones. I know those ones. They can keep you up for days. And lately I've been finding that people don't actually want to fix errors. They'll rather wait for me to come and help them fix the error. And then while they're waiting for me, they're just sitting there doing absolutely nothing. While they might have just spent the time to try and fix the error. The first thing you need to do when you get an error is actually read the error. A lot of times I see people, they see if they've got an error and they don't actually read the error. They just see the, they just basically like flash error message and then they go and they try and fix the error. But it's like, you don't even know what the error is. They don't actually read the error message. The error message tells you everything you need to know. Well, not everything. It basically, an error message is a symptom. It's not the problem. It is the symptom. Very important. So if you get an error message, read everything. Read the whole thing from the start to the finish. Make sure you read every single character, every single letter, every, if there's a path name, check if the path name is correct. It might be wrong. Maybe that's your error. You've put in a path name, path name that's not right. If there's a permission error, then yeah, it'll tell you there's no permission, so fix the permission. If it's an access denied error, it tells you you don't have access, so give it access. Go wherever you can get access. If it's a MySQL error and it tells you, hey, I can't connect to the database. Well, maybe it's a connection error. That's what it's telling you. Go and fix the connection error. Obviously, it can't connect. So if it tells you it can't connect, it's most likely an IP in a port that it's not listening on or you've connected to the wrong server. If it's an access denied error, then it means it can connect. It's just denying you access. So that's obviously a username and password error. So just read the error. So there's two types of errors. One is a compile time error and another one's a runtime error. Now they do very different things. A compile time error is typically when you miss a bracket or a comma or uh, you forgot a, yeah, maybe some indentation is wrong like in Python. So a compile time error is obviously before you even run the code, it'll give an error. Those are usually fairly easy to fix. It sort of tells you exactly what's wrong. The runtime error you'll only see when the code runs. Those are the more difficult ones to fix. Those you're going to have to insert debugs. You're going to have to do some guessing. So you're going to have to look up and say, cool, um, what might cause this? Just thumb suck. Maybe you'll get to the right answer. I don't know. The only exception is SQL. SQL, if you get SQL syntax errors, it's actually not a runtime error. It is a compile time error. Now SQL queries, as soon as you feed a database a SQL query, it actually takes that query and it actually compiles it as code. After it compiles it, then only it executes it. So while it's compiling it, it might find an error, and then it tells you, listen, there's a problem here. Um, but that's also very difficult to find. So if it tells you there's a problem here, go and look at your query. Look at every single line, look if there's enough commas, look if all the brackets are there, look if you're not missing a from or a where, or if your order is right of your from and your where. Just look closely, it is there, you will find it. Just look. That's the main point you need to carry home, is look. Look everywhere, not just exactly where it tells you where the problem is. Look around it, go a bit up, go a bit down, you'll find it. You can even try, Googling the error. Have you Googled the error? Maybe other people have experienced a similar problems and it's something wrong with the platform or something wrong with the software that you're using. It's not actually you that's the problem. If you still can't find the problem, add a debug in every second line. I literally, if there's lines of code like this, I'll add a debug there, there, there. And if I add a debug there, on the previous line, whatever variables was changed, those are the variables that you debug there. Whatever variables are changed there, those are the variables you debug there. Whatever variables are changed there, those are the variables you debug there. Then you can actually see, oh, at this point something goes wrong. Or at this point something goes wrong. So the problem is probably there. You need to find the problem. If you get a null pointer error, it means that the variable has never been initialized. 
it means that the problem is not on the line number where it actually says that the null pointer is. The problem is further up. So if it says line number five, line number five, the error or the actual problem is not line number five. It's probably line number four or three or two or whatever is above it or even where it comes from. Maybe it's a method and it sends data from somewhere else. And remember that an error is a symptom. The error is not the problem. The error is simply a symptom, which can obviously help you to find the problem, but the error is not the problem. It's like when somebody coughs. You don't just prescribe cough medicine. Eventually, this person starts coughing blood. You're still not just gonna prescribe cough medicine. You're gonna go and find out what's actually the problem. <laughs> You're not just gonna keep on prescribing cough medicine until he dies. It's exactly the same thing. If there's an error, the error is the symptom. Don't try and fix the error. Try and find the cause of the error. If you obviously get to a point where, okay, you've located it, but it's, it's there. That's where the problem is. Or you find a value that's wrong somewhere. Then you can maybe try emulating in your head. Like think, how can we possibly, let's say a variable is supposed to be six, but you came to five. Think, start emulating in your head and think, how does it get to five? What can possibly happen? Obviously somewhere there's a one missing. So how can there be a bug that makes it one less? And then you'll probably get to the, to the answer. What I'll sometimes do is I just guess. I just, I'm just like, oh, hmm, I think it's that. And then a lot of times I'm right. Oddly enough, the more experienced you get, the more accurate your guessing becomes. Eventually you can even help other people by simply guessing where their problems are. And you actually guess right. Like I say, roughly about 50% of the time. Oh, why? 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 Okay, that's it. I give up. I give up. The error you see might not be the error. There might be errors somewhere else as well. You just need to find those. Sometimes to find those, you need to start digging in some log files. Sometimes to find those, you need to open up your, if it's a web app, you need to open up your web console and look at the previous errors. Sometimes if you try and fix the specific error that's yeah, you will never actually be able to fix it because it's actually caused by previous errors further upstream. So always fix the first error that you get. Never the last one. Most of the time you will never be able to fix the last one because the first errors causes the last one. If there's a null pointer exception some, somewhere down the line, then it means that thread has crashed. It hasn't done its job. Of course, if some other thread is trying to fetch data from there or assume that that thread, thread's done, then you're going to have some problems. You're going to have more errors. But it's pointless looking at those errors. You just need to look at the original error. So sometimes you really have to look at your MySQL logs. You need to look at your um, web server logs. If you're running processes like Java apps, you need to look at their logs. You need to look like at other places, which is possibly a file or maybe a linker, an extra, some app support debugger that you can plug into the app. Then you can actually see more information of what's going on in the app and you'll actually see more errors that maybe it doesn't print out to the screen. Sometimes what you need to do, you actually need to increase the verbosity of the errors. It only prints out errors, but not warnings. But if you actually run the app and tell the app to also print out warnings, then you'll actually see why you get the errors because there was a million warnings before that and that actually led to the error. If you still can't find the problem, what you can also do is you can actually comment out blocks of code. Just remove the code from the execution altogether and then see if you still get the error. If suddenly the error is gone, then hey, maybe it's the code we commented out. Maybe that's actually where the error sits. And then what you can do is maybe that block of code you commented out, just uncomment half of it. Run it again. Hey, the error is back. Oh, it's obviously that section that's still there. So yeah, that's a very easy way to uh, yeah find bugs. The other day I had a very interesting error where uh, the web hosting company moved the website from one environment to the next. And then suddenly the only error I got was internal server, server error. And 
the reason obviously they were moving the website is because they were changing their complete development environment to a whole new platform. So the customer service was so busy, I couldn't get hold of them to actually get the information of the error. Um, and the only thing I got was internal server error. That's it. So the only option I had left was to uncomment code to see when the error will stop. Eventually I got to a point where I uncommented everything <laughs> and there was no code, but it still threw the error. So the only thing left to do was the file, the path. Uh, eventually I just guessed permissions and yeah, it ended up being the permissions. But at the end of the day, I had to try everything that was in my power and I just basically guessed and I saw, okay, the only output I have or the only manipulation I have was commenting and guessing and that's what I did. What can also happen is that the error, this is very, um, this is very rarely, this doesn't happen a lot, so don't pay too much attention now. The error sometimes is completely wrong. The error doesn't actually tell you what's wrong. It's a completely different, uh, it'll tell you, I don't know, the file's missing, but meanwhile the file's there, you just can't include it. I think there was an error like that in, um, in C, when you're trying to load a linked library, it'll actually tell you that the library is not found. But meanwhile, the library is found and it starts loading the library, but then there's an error to load the library, but then it tells you it can't find the library for some reason, but it actually did find it. So yeah, sometimes, only sometimes that happens. I'm just gonna sleep it off. If you do get an error, don't ask for somebody's help immediately when you get the error. Maybe just try and fix the error yourself, just for a while, before you actually ask somebody else to fix it. Purely because if you don't fix the error, you never ever learn. There's a saying that goes something like, you can't be successful without failure. And I think there's another one that says something like, um, Every time you fail, you get closer to success. So if you fix errors, you fail. And the only way to get to success is to fix the failure. If you ask somebody else to fix the failure, you've learned nothing. You haven't progressed. So it's very important that you fix the error yourself. So if there's one thing I want you to take out of this, wait, maybe two things I want you to take out of this. And that is to one, Read the error, study the error, understand the error, okay? Two is that the error is a symptom. It's not the problem. It's purely a symptom of the problem. And most of the time, in order to find the problem, you need to go upstream. You need to go back in the code. So if it's on this line, you need to go up. Look at the lines above it. That's probably where the actual problem is that causes the error. That's all from me. I really hope you manage to fix your errors. I know the pain. <laughs> I've been through it. <laughs> I've been stuck with errors for days. I think the most is probably about two weeks where I've been stuck with one error. So I, I know, I know. So I hope this has been helpful. If it is, then please give me a like. And if you want to get more tips in the future, then subscribe. Until next time. Ciao.